any punctures in the, in the uh, organ you're working with, um, it'll leak out. It's not much point. You don't give it that pressure. It just spills out, goes everywhere. Uh, likewise, you need as much of the, uh, the arteries, etc., intact to give you something to work with. You have to be able to apply, uh, climb up to it if you like. What I recommend anyhow is, is going uh, to a home health specialist and talking nicely to them and explaining. You get some funny looks, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, explain to them what you're after. So this is typically how you receive a, a kidney, um, covered in fat, that is. And they're relatively easy to peel back. Um, you can do it sort of manually like that, um, to an extent, and then isolate out the um, arteries and the ureter. The veins on these are fine and too small. They're tiny. Um, you can't really see them. I can't see them. Mine's it's not great, but you can't see them. You will notice them when it comes to injecting. They'll start leaking slightly. You'll get a little bit of uh, uh, loss of, um, of resin. And if it's bad, um, at that stage, you can clip them off using uh, what we use forceps. If you don't have forceps, I've found that um, bulldog clips um, <laughs> can do the job. Uh, anything like this, a string, if you can get around it to tie it off, or even have somebody just sit there with a pair of tweezers while you do it. You need to do them as fresh as possible. Uh, partly, you don't want them going off, and you, know, you certainly don't want to have things that stink um, to work with. It's better to work with fresh. But, also because they tend to stiffen up. I mean, you'll be able to recognize it, but um, it's not that easy to see. Um, the ureter, i found in, in the kidney, tends to be, it's hard to distinguish it as it should. It looks more like a kind of fibrous um, line of um, tissue rather than a tube. And um, as I said, the, the veins tend to be tiny, um, really. They, they're, they're under no pressure, so they've collapsed back to nothing. It's down to the organ you're using as to what kind of plumbing you want to attach. But um, you know, I've used um, tubing, piping, anything really that will fit in and tie off. So long as you can backtrack it and attach it to the syringe. And again, be creative. There's no sort of written rules on how to apply these things. If a, if a piece of wire will tie it off, fine, then yes. Um, I'd also recommend um, going and talking nicely to your local hospital or a medical practitioner or surgery or whatever and see if they've got any items that are beyond their kind of sterility date that they normally just um, dis discard because they'll be perfectly fine for, for using for this sort of thing. Um, another trap I've found is that they, they do tend to want to pop out of the pressure. So in some cases just tying a piece of string around the, the artery, which you'll see, I'll show you. Uh, isn't enough. So what I've found is a, a little bit of wire wrapped around um, with a dip of um, super glue on it is enough to give it a wee collar to stop it from slipping out. Yeah. This one I put a, the same thing wrapped with a wire with a bit of super glue just to give it a collar. So if I can feed that in. Okay, I've gone in there maybe, hold on, moments, about 15 mils. And what I'll do is grab a piece of string. This is really, you know, Cotton, we call it canvas twine. And sort of canvas stitching twine will do the trick nicely. You want to leave a little extra on there, so be generous. But the idea is to tie it off nice and tight and um, stop it from being able to let loose its uh, resin. When you come to inject the resin, it's under a fair amount of pressure, so if it can escape somewhere, it'll try. Now, in this circumstance here, I've tied off the, the um, ureter with it. Um, you shouldn't get any backflow through the ureter, but again, you should be surprised to find backflow out of um, veins. And it's probably the first time you all notice them is once they start leaking. So hopefully it'll do just that. Another sort of consideration is that it came as a bit of a surprise to me to find the heart has its own blood supply separate to its function as the pump. So what you'll see here, well, we come up here and nosy afterwards, is uh, there's an inner structure, which are the, um, a solid inner core, which is the chambers of the heart. Um, 
but then the outer structure, which is the actual blood flow. Oh, for this one, I'll put the fibers in. As far as putting pigments in, you, you definitely want to put a pigment in here. Otherwise, you'll notice that um, on these, it's possible that there's not enough pigment in here, but what I've found is too much, and it's, it's a delicate kind of balancing act, too much, and it affects the, the integrity of the reason. You'll find that these fine structures break a lot easier if you've got too much. Um, pigment in there. We've got various pigments, but I've found that um, you know, the old hobby enamel paints will do just fine. For 100 mils, I, I would probably use yay much. Mm. It's tiny little amounts. For this 10 mils, it's going to be a lot less than that. You find it'll go an awful long way. One of the dangers, actually, with the vernies is once you've got the resin in and it's hit its gel time, you don't want to handle them. Any movement of the organ is nice and flexible you're basically undermining the structure of the, the resin trying to set inside. So um, one of the benefits of this having such a short working time, having a reasonable working time, um, the benefit is that um, it'll set hard you know, that much sooner and you run less risk of damage. This um, needle that I put in here had you know, the wire and super glue bundle around to stop slipping off. You don't have to do that. If you've just stuck a needle in, what I suggest you have uh, tied it off without a kind of a um, jutter bar to stop sliding, is you leave a, a piece of string on, tie it off on your hand. That's attached directly to, to the artery so that when it comes under pressure, it can't slip off the um, needle. It's really a matter of feel as to how much pressure you apply. See how it's leaking? Those are the little fine veins. Um, it suddenly come under back pressure and there's several of them there, but without kind of a magnifying glass or a microscope, I wouldn't have personally been able to find this. Um, but at this point, as soon as you see that, you notice that you can look at clamping it off. Um, now, something I've taken to do, is if you needed this, you know, syringes and things for multiple, um, if you're doing multiples and you want to use the same syringe, then you'd tie this off at this point. What, what I've found is leaving the syringe to seat gives you a wee handle to hang on to and um, it blocks it up so you can't get back flow. It's just, it's just a handy trick. What I've been using, as I said, is a 5% sodium hydroxide mix as a macerant. Once that resin is set, you can put it um, immersive in. Um, I always make sure I've got like, a much larger vessel, at least three quarters larger than the specimen. The reason being that if you put it into, say, in this case, a small beaker with a 5% solution around it, it's going to wear out, it's going to stop reacting sooner. And you want to be able to keep working, you don't want to come back and find that it's not getting anywhere. Um, certainly for hearts, kidneys, um, uh, livers, etc., just pure organs with no other consideration than melting the tissue down, um, sodium hydroxide is great. One of the other things is if you can macerate that out within 48 hours, 24 hours even, um, you are giving the tissue time to decay, so there's none of the issues of um, having decomp smells. There's very little smell associated with doing this, this technique this quick. Um, and certainly if you had a class that was weekly, you could easily, uh, maybe cut this down to a 2% mix and just let it sit for the week. Um, if you were bi-weekly, you could easily do it. Have, so you did the casting one day, um, maybe had got into master it later that day and he took it out, cleaned it up the following lesson. Um, that's your it looks a bit yeah, but I've deliberately left the soap on here just to show you the kind of layers. And what you'll find is that um, that side is that these um, layers and buildups on the outside will turn to soap. Um, running it under a warm tap, a hot tap, well not hot hot, but um, kind of like a hot bath, hot shower kind of temperature will dissolve that. So I usually immerse them in a, in a bucket and 
um, just allow time to break down and soften up and break down. But um, too hot, then the resin will soften up and will start losing structures and start breaking off. Uh, again, this was a, a really small lamb's heart. Um, this was too little pigment, but other than that, um, yeah. Oh, actually, here's another consideration too. This um, presentation can be another um, consideration for uh, classes. Um, putting them into resin blocks or making them small hanging. I mean, this took me half an hour to make. Uh, just stuff that was a pen. Um, yeah.